So the second alternative I just wanted to mention very briefly is something called LDA, which is short for linear discriminant analysis. So any guess on what linear discriminant analysis might do, Michael? It may, it rem well, linear, so it's got a linear in it. Um, discriminant reminds me of like classification lines. Yes. So what linear discriminant analysis does is it finds a projection that discriminates based on the label. This actually will feel, this feels a lot like supervised learning, right? You take advantage of the label um, and you come up with a transformation such that you will in fact project things into different clumps or clusters or otherwise separate them based upon their label. So you can imagine using a lot of algorithms as we used in the past, in some sense what they're doing is linear discriminant analysis. They're finding um, lines or finding linear separators uh, between different uh, clumps of points. And if you think about the binary case, for example, you could think of SVM as doing something like this, where what you've done is you transform your points not into a specific label, plus or minus, one or zero, yes or no, but you instead uh, project it onto the line such that it will clump things accordingly. And you use the value of that projection uh, as a way of re-representing the data. Does that make sense? Yeah, and this, this approach seems a little different from all the other ones in that it's actually paying attention to how the resulting components are going to get used, right? That's exactly right. It actually right. is going to try to help you specifically with the, with the classification. Right, that's exactly right. All three of the examples we gave before feel almost like filter methods, right, in that they have some criterion they're trying to maximize, even though randomized projections is, uh, who knows what it's trying to maximize besides randomness. Um, but they don't care about the ultimate learner or the ultimate label that's associated with them, uh, whereas LDA does care explicitly about the labels and wants to find ways to discriminate, finds sort of projections or features that make it easier for you to do that discrimination. Now, it also does not care about what learner is going to happen next, but it does care about the label. So it does end up doing something slightly different um, and works pretty well in a world where you have very simple things that can be linearly discriminated. Okay? Yeah. So that's it for the alternatives. I actually think that's pretty much it for um, feature transformation. So just why don't we wrap up? Just oh, a yeah. quick question, though. So LDA, I've heard of LDA in this context before, meaning something else, like um, latent Dirichlet allocation? Yeah, but that happened long after linear discriminant analysis, and we haven't moved past the 90s. Well, I'm just saying that it does seem, I, and I think it is actually an uh, unsupervised approach. Oh, latent, dish, oh, no, absolutely. Um, but is well beyond the scope of the discussion that we're going to have here. All right, as you wish. But it is, in fact. Every time you see a D, you can think Dirichlet which is the computer science pronunciation. Other people pronounce it differently. Yes, because the correct way of pronouncing it is sort of beyond my, it has another syllable in there. Is it German or something? Yeah. It's Dirschle. Is it Dirschle? <laughs> Dirschle? That sounded German. <laughs> okay, so let's wrap up, Michael. All right. Okay.